Welcome back. Last time, last week, I talked about the beginnings of inflation and I introduced it by talking about some, honestly, some issues, some shortcomings with the Big Bang model of cosmology, the basic Big Bang model that was developed in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s to address observations that we had about the expanding universe and the presence of the cosmic microwave background. Very successful, very powerful, very predictive theory, a good solid scientific theory, but did have some shortcomings. It wasn't able to explain every feature of the universe. It couldn't address the horizon problem. It couldn't address the the flatness problem. There is another very specific problem that a bunch of high energy physicists were grappling with back in the 1970s, the late 1970s. And this is called the monopole problem. The monopole problem is an issue that crops up when we look at the very, 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 very young universe. So I'm talking about the universe when it is less than less than 10 to the minus 35 seconds old. That's 0.0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 35 zeros, one seconds old. So, so like even faster than that, like even faster than I can literally snap my fingers. When the universe is that age, it is incredibly exotic. And our universe is exotic at this age because it has, I mean, I don't even have the superlative here to tell you how strange, how high a temperature, how high a density the universe has at this epoch. If you take our whole entire universe, which is very large nowadays and relatively cold, you run the clock backwards, our universe gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It also gets hotter and hotter and hotter and denser and denser and denser. This is what stuff does when you compress it. You run the clock back about 13.8 billion years when our universe was only 300,000 years old and all this stuff in it is crammed into such a tight ball when the universe is about a million times smaller than it is today, we encounter what we call a phase transition. The universe at that age isn't a neutral gas of just just hydrogen and helium and lithium minding their own business. No, you squish them together really, really high. You crank those temperatures up to thousands of degrees and you get a plasma where the protons and the electrons are disconnected from each other. This is the state the universe was in up until it was was 300,000 years old. That, and then at that moment, the universe cooled off, underwent a phase transition, changed state to become a neutral gas, and in the process released the cosmic microwave background, which is super handy for doing cosmology. Now we're going to push it back even smaller because things are going to get even weirder. Because, you know, just neutral gas to plasma, that's like interesting, but not very weird. Now we're going to push things back where things get weird. We're going to cram the universe into such a high energy state that it changes state again. That has a completely different character than the present day universe where even atomic nuclei can't exist independently. They're too squished together and you just have free floating uh, protons and neutrons all slamming against each other. And then we're going to run the clock back even more. We're going to cram the universe into such a compact volume that its temperatures and pressures get so high that even the forces of nature can't exist independently. This is one of the amazing things we've learned about the universe in the past few decades is that under extreme conditions, the forces of nature go away. They merge together. The first two to merge together are electromagnetism and weak nuclear. At very high temperatures and pressures, these two forces, which are totally different, if you've ever noticed, the electromagnetic force is 
very, very, I'm using the word very a lot because I really don't have any other words, very different than the weak nuclear force. But at high temperatures, they merge together, they become a single force. They become the electroweak force. So at high temperatures, there's only three forces of nature. You go even hotter, even more dense than the strong nuclear force binds together with the electroweak, and you're left with two forces of nature. And this is the worst Vulcan salute you've ever seen. You've got gravity over here, and then you've got something we call the grand unified theory force or the gut force, unified into a single force. There, I'll do it like this. So they look like they're all bundled together. You go even higher and we think gravity even merges together for a theory of everything. We're not there yet. We're not going to talk about that one. We're going to leave gravity off ye over here and, and it's lonesome. We're going to talk about these three forces. When the universe is about 10 to the minus 35 seconds old, that's when the strong nuclear force splits off from the other forces. And when this happens, when this phase transition happens when strong nuclear pops away from weak nuclear and electromagnetic it floods the universe with some very exotic creatures it floods the universe with something we call a magnetic monopole a magnetic monopole is a north by itself a south by itself. You know, think of magnets. Think of magnets, good old fashioned magnets, north and south paired together. You chop that magnet in half. You don't get north and south over here. No, you just get two magnets, each with their own north and south. You split it again, you get north and south again, north and south again, north and south again. This is something we observe. There's no like fundamental reason why we can't have a north and south independently of each other, but they just never appear in electromagnetism. But in this phase transition in the early universe, the universe should have been flooded, absolutely infested with north and south looking particles that we call monopoles. One pole, get it? Magnetic monopole. We think, we don't understand the grand unified theory. We don't understand how exactly how the strong nuclear force merges with all the other forces. We don't know exactly how this transition happens or the mechanics of what happened. We're not exactly sure it flooded with monopoles, but in the 70s, people were worried about this, about how the universe should be swarming with monopoles, but then we go out and look and like, hey, Steve, Linda, have you guys seen any monopoles? No, no, me neither. Where are all the monopoles? And it was in this problem that Alan Guth, a physicist, was he was investigating this monopole problem and he realized that the phase transition that creates monopoles might also get rid of them. It might also get rid of them by forcing the universe to undergo a period of incredibly rapid expansion. That the act of the phase transition of self, of when the strong nuclear force peels away from the weak nuclear and from electromagnetic, yes, a bunch of monocle, monopoles get created, but then something else funny happens to the universe, something called inflation. This inflationary event took the universe to be ridiculously big. It went it, something like made the universe be 10 to the 26 times bigger than it was before in the span of like 10 to the minus 32 seconds. The numbers I'm when we talk about inflation, the numbers are just ridiculous on the face of it. We just have to go with it. This is what the math is telling us. 10 to the 26, so the universe, when this gut transition happened, the universe went from something like the size of an electron to something like the size of a golf ball. 
in 10 and minus 30 seconds. And that doesn't seem like much to you, but it was a big deal to the universe at the time. It's like inflate, this is the roughly the same scale. I think I'm getting this right. If we were to take you, the physical person of you, and in 10 to the minus 30 seconds, inflate you to be the size of the observable universe today. That's a pretty big scale change, don't you think? That might affect the arrangement of your inner organs, maybe. It completely changed the character of the universe. It got rid of the monopoles. It got rid of the monopoles by diluting them, by spreading them out over this incredible volume, the, the volume of a golf ball, by spreading them out over the, this incredible volume, each individual part of the universe, our obs ob observable patch, is likely to only have like one monopole in it, which means we'll never see it. So monopoles get created, but they get diluted. And Guth later realized, and other physicists later realized, that this scenario of inflation solves the horizon and flatness problems too. The flatness problem, because the universe is now so big, who cares what its curvature is? Our little observable patch is always going to come out flat because the universe is far, far larger than we can see. Just like the earth is curved, but my backyard looks pretty flat because my backyard is so small compared to the surface of the earth itself. So our cosmological backyard looks flat, guaranteed to be flat. Who cares what the curvature, global curvature of the universe is so much bigger, we'll never measure it. And it solves the horizon problem because all parts of the universe, they got together when it was just teensy tiny. They all got to share notes, equilibriarize, equilibriate, share the same temperature, agree on what they're going to look like. And then inflation sets in and yanks these chunks of the universe outside of causal contact and allows them to evolve independently. But the pre-inflation memory lingers on. And so they all agree on the same temperature despite being totally separated in space. So the monopole problem turned out to be a potential solution for itself with the gut model, with that phase transition driving a period of accelerated expansion also happens to solve the horizon and flatness problems. Sounds like a done deal, except Alan Guth's model of inflation didn't work. So that's what I'll talk about next time is that the actual mechanics of Alan Guth's inflation and in what it actually means and now how we approach inflation. So I'll see you next time for more on this wonderful, weird journey into the earliest moments of the universe's existence. If you like this video, please hit like, make sure you get notified when I go live. And of course, go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter so you can help keep supporting this show. See you next time.